Yeah, guys, it's not a generic statement when we say that females are more vulnerable to sexual predators, which uh, has a plethora of negative effects for women. Now we have to teach our young girls to be strong and teach them how to say no. And sometimes even that leads to issues that we've seen, but it's definitely a good place to start. We've got PNP caretaker for Southeast Clarendon, Patricia Duncan Sutherland here with us this morning. Good morning. Thank good you morning. for being here. Thank you um, for having me. This good morning, is, Jamaica. This is an issue that you sit in um, Southeast Clarendon and you speak with the young girls. Well, generally the folks are both, but the young girls. Yeah. Um, tell me what you're getting from them. Well, um, in that particular conversation, it was for them a great way for them to begin to express themselves because it was a conversation that included young girls, young men, and their fathers and their mothers. Okay. Actually, it's quite nice because right there in Southeast Clarendon, all of them play netball together. Oh, cool. Boys, girls, That's lovely. fathers, and mothers. So I joined them for a netball game that day. And so we we're having a conversation after. I went with their intention to have that conversation. <coughs> and how does it feel for you as a young woman walking down the road? So in Jamaica, we're not used to talking about how we feel. We are, so it was good for them. Mm -hmm. And it was, they were beginning to express that they, it was not something that they enjoyed, that it was making them feel uncomfortable as a young woman. But then the young men were also able to express that, you know, they were feeling dissed if when they called to a woman and they didn't respond to them. And I mean, Jim, so just give me a little respect. Uh, but then we could then have the conversation about what gets respect. And, you know, what is a respectful way to engage a young woman? Mm -hmm. And so it was a really very good conversation and one that they um, welcomed and wanted to have more of. Mm -hmm. And it, it would open up. It's something that we now need to talk about in Jamaica. What are some of the things that, 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 that you found were common from them in terms of um, what did they think was okay, even for the men in the way they approach women? Well, the men actually didn't understand their boundaries. They thought it was okay to describe a woman's body's body parts. They thought it was okay to say to a woman, boy, they would have a desire to sleep with them and exactly how they would want to sleep with them. And that's because of what they knew or what they know coming up culturally or? Well, yeah, you know, it's a part of our, our culture yeah. is, although most of our, our households are financed and run by women, our culture is a male dominant culture in that respect. Men believe that they have a right to speak to women in any um, way that they choose to. Mm -hmm. they, they believe that, so there is a certain amount of objectification that occurs of sex, this sexual encounter in uh, Jamaica. Mm -hmm. And uh, so therefore that, that kind of permissiveness is there in our society. And, and it's something and that has to be unlearned. Mm -hmm. And it leads to domestic violence. It leads to uh, murder. It leads to rape. Because eventually if you're not sure where your boundaries are, you're going to step over them and step over them and step over them until it becomes something that is really horrendous. Mm -hmm. so, so back to Delia's question, they thought it was okay to describe what they wanted, how yeah. they wanted it. Mm -hmm. um, any other areas of, of commonality that struck out or stuck out to you? In terms of the men engaging? Mm -hmm. no, well, what actually stuck out to me was not even so much how the men engaged, but that the young ladies, because there was a space, felt comfortable to tell the men, this is not what they want. They do not enjoy this. It makes them not want to go to parties. Like there was a group of young girls there. They say, you know, every time we go out together as a group of friends and we just want to dance, every man feels that they can't come and dance mm -hmm. behind us or dance in front of us and we must respond. Yeah. And that's not what we want. We want to just go to a party and have fun. Mm. Then the whole, but posting that video online as well, um, as we raise awareness around sexual harassment, you now started a whole other conversation online around you know, is it the fault of the woman because of the way she dresses? Oh, oh gosh. That's another full conversation yeah. to have, mm -hmm. to recognize that there is in fact a limit when you see somebody looking nice, that you don't have the right to say that they should not make themselves attractive to you. Mm. You have the responsibility to not encroach on their space, you know? So sexual harassment is a real thing inside of, uh, so I come here as a caretaker for Southeast Clarendon, but I also, I'm the PRO for PNP Women's Movement. And in that context, on the 24th of November, you know, 25th of November is International Day 
for the elimination of the violence, violence against, against women. women. Mm -hmm. So on the 24th, we are planning a vigil at Mandela Park where we will have some music, but also some stories that people will tell their own stories and also talk about some of the ways that we can engage to change our society. One, through laws and two, through behaviours. What can we do to encourage a change in a community with respect to how, the, uh, how young men this, interact is, with young girls? Is this what's missing, part this face-to-face this space where young women and young men can have dialogue yes. and at the same time. It, yeah, is that what and, is, and honest same, dialogue, mm -hmm. not not stilted dialogue. Mm. No sugar so coating. even when we do it in our because the truth of the matter, in my ideal world, in our schools, this would be the kind of conversation would occur, but would occur in such a way that it would be natural mm -hmm. and that they would feel comfortable to express how they really feel, both the men and the women. Yeah. Because it was important to acknowledge that the men, because of their upbringing and culture and what the society has told them is permissible, were not doing it out of any angst and mm -hmm. were, they did not have a bad intention but they didn't understand what their action was causing for women mm -hmm. and why women didn't feel comfortable to walk down the road. So further to, to Dahlia's point about the face-to-face -face interaction, this sounds like something that has legs, Miss um, Pat, that you can take across Jamaica, across communities. Is it something yeah. that you're looking at with your counterparts in the different constituencies to say, let's do this on a broader scale, replicate it so that we can start getting the message out and see if we can start to influence some discussion and some behavior change, ultimately. Yes. Well, ultimately, that's what we want mm -hmm. to do as, part, as the PMP Women's Movement. We want to help to bring this conversation to the communities and so that, that we can begin to have that cultural change. Mm -hmm. Part of the beginning of that, as I said, would be the vigil. We did a few of those conversations in schools last year when we're talking about um, sexuality and sexual harassment and domestic violence, but we want to even um, broaden it more and bring it to the corner, you know, carry mm -hmm. it to the markets. Mm -hmm. Let's have that awareness, you know, hashtag me too, hashtag time come, mm -hmm. you know, hashtag no means no. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I read an article about um, a school. It, it didn't say which school. The parent was anonymous, but she was saying she wanted to pull her 14-year-old because when she went to the school, um, she had a fear that she was going to get pregnant, that she was going to fall within a group of young ladies who were going to get pregnant. Yes. Um, have you encountered that in your discussions, that there are girls who do not yet understand that that's also their right um, to not have children at 14, to not have children at 16, that education is a right and and their development is, is their right as well? Well, I haven't, really I haven't really come across girls that do not know this. Okay. They know this. That's one of, the, one of the good things that we did in our country is over the 70s, coming into the 80s, that social awareness, mm. that we have the right to certain things. Mm -hmm. What we didn't do is empower and give the tools on how to express that right and how to live inside of that right. Mm. And that's what needs to change now if we are going to change this culture of sexual harassment. I mean, even inside the PNP, we've put in place a sexual harassment policy. Now to operationalize it is a new culture change mm -hmm. that needs to occur mm -hmm. so, and so to make it effective. As we, we get the wrap, what, what are the next steps? You've unearthed all of this ah, discussion yes. and, and, and angst and, you know, all right, good so things to take us forward. So what, what next? next? Two things. We had put forward a bill in 2015, I'm not sure, 2014 or 15, a sexual harassment bill. We need to get that bill through Parliament where it now becomes a criminal offence to harass a woman on the street. That bill they were trying to look at saying, well, oh, let's only do it for the workplace, but no. Our Jamaican woman must feel comfortable at the bus stop. We must feel comfortable walking down the road. It must be there for everywhere that, so that we can be comfortable. We want a Jamaica that works for all. We mm. want a Jamaica that works for women. Mm. When we talk about we want to level up Jamaica, when we say level up Jamaica, we mean we want to make it work for everybody and everybody can re work together, build together and become even greater and better together. So we want that bill and we want to continue these conversations so that women 
and men begin to express themselves in a more positive way and have more positive interaction together. Nice. Gotcha. Nice. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you for having me. <laughs> Take it <laughs> away, Harris. Take on Southeast Clarendon, Patricia Duncan, Sutherland. The impact of urbanization on rural communities, that's a serious discussion and we're going to have it after the break. <laughs> so please stay with us.